Chapter 1. The Beetle Plague I've got the Sunday papers, Bertolt said, pushing Uncle Max's door open with his shoulder and shuffling into the living room backwards. Newton, the copper-coloured firefly that was Bertolt's closest friend, hovered above the boy's cloud of white hair, his abdomen glowing gently. Darkus and Virginia looked up. They were sitting cross-legged either side of an aqua-blue paddling pool filled with oak mulch and a mound of mugs. Darkus was wearing the Weevil Knievel t-shirt he'd bought in LA, and Virginia was dressed in faded denims, old jeans and a hand-me-down jacket covered in badges. We're feeding the beetles, Darkus said, placing a pot of strawberry jelly amongst the teacups. This was where the surviving beetles from Beetle Mountain lived now. And this room, in Uncle Max's flat, housed what was left of base camp, their den. It was where they met to plan their mission to stop Lucretia Cutter's tyrannical attempt to take over the world. Baxter, the glossy black rhinoceros beetle that understood Darkus better than anyone, was supervising the handing out of jelly from Darkus's shoulder, waggling his spiky forelegs to show where it should be put. Virginia was holding a brass plant mister over the paddling pool and was furiously pumping a fine spray of water over the oak mulch to prevent it from drying out. Marvin, the cherry red frog leg leaf beetle who wouldn't be parted from her, was hanging from one of Virginia's many braids by his bulging back legs, munching on a blob of banana jelly. Dusting the soil from his hands, Darkus got to his feet and came over to the coffee table where Berthold was neatly laying out the newspapers. Virginia put the mister on the floor and joined them. There are more stories about crops being attacked. Look, here's one about the Colorado potato beetle destroying harvests in Russia. People are beginning to believe what Lucretia Cutter said at the film awards. And they're panicking. Bertolt pushed his glasses up his nose and looked nervously at Darkus. There are reports of spoilt wheat crops in Germany now too, and three outbreaks of disease caused by a build-up of animal manure. The government is finally saying these are controlled and targeted attacks. Darkus moved forward to look at the papers, but Bertolt stood between him and the table. And, um, Darkus... There's something else. Virginia lifted a tabloid, reading out the headline. Beetle plague, food rationed. She flicked over a page, her brown eyes scanning the words. What? I don't believe it. The papers think Lucretia Cutter's threat is real, but they don't believe she's capable of creating the Frankenstein beetles because she makes dresses for a living. Darker shrugged. Perhaps they don't want to believe she's found a way to control insects. Oh, it's not that, Virginia snorted. It's because she's a woman. Virginia, Bertolt tried to catch her eye. People always think the best scientists are men. Virginia slapped the paper with the back of her hand in outrage. Listen to this. The troubled coleopterist Dr Bartholomew Cuttle, director of science at the Natural History Museum and one-time fiancé of Lucretia Cutter, is heading up a team of geneticists and entomologists, men who've all mysteriously vanished in the last five years. This elite force is behind the mad fashionista's beetle army, using Lucretia Cutter's theatrical image to front their attack on the world. What? Darkus grabbed the newspaper from Virginia's hand. But that's a lie, he scanned the article. Why are they saying that about Dad? Because he's a man, Virginia said triumphantly. Bertolt sighed and shook his head. They are blaming him for the Beatles? All of them, Darkus said, reading the article at speed. This is wrong. We have to tell them. Dad's trying to stop her. Darkus, Bertolt said softly. It's, it's because he was Lucretia Cutter's guest at the film awards. He picked up a different paper. Look, the Daily Messenger says as much. Dr Bartholomew Cuttle, seen on Lucretia Cutter's arm at the film awards, is thought to be the mastermind behind the plague of deadly beetles. That's totally unfair. Darkus felt his face getting hot. It's all lies. My dad would never hurt anyone. It's disgusting. Virginia nodded, and they're attributing Lucretia Cutter's genius to a team of men. 
genius? Darkus shouted. She is not a genius. Of course she's a genius, Virginia replied. She's bred a huge army of beetles that is destroying human food supplies and taking control of the planet. That's incredible. No human has ever ruled the whole earth and she's going for it big time. She shook her head and looked at Darkus. Don't worry, they're going to have to acknowledge it's her genius eventually. She's not a genius, Darkus shouted, jabbing a finger at Virginia. She's a monster. She wants to starve people and blame it on my dad. And look what she's done to Novak and Spencer. Hey, hey, calm down, Virginia frowned. I didn't say I agreed with what she's doing. Well, it certainly sounded like it, Darker said, scowling at Virginia. Virginia thrust out her chin, about to protest. Mm, guys, Bertolt cleared his throat. <clears throat> Let's not fall out again, he gave them a pleading smile. We are all on the same side, remember? Virginia huffed out a sigh. <sighs> I'm sorry, she looked at Darkus. I should have said evil genius. She lifted her shoulders. I'm just trying to point out that everyone is underestimating Lucretia Cutter. She pushed the papers around the table. Blaming your dad is a false trail. It won't help them find her or stop her. I'm not underestimating her, Darkus replied. Eleven days had passed since they'd returned from the film awards, but to Darkus it felt like years. The image of his father limping away, following Lucretia Cutter up into the rafters of the Hollywood theatre, was the last thing he thought about before he went to sleep at night, and the first thing in his head when he woke up in the morning. There was a loud crack, and they all jumped. What was that? Bertolt asked, looking faintly terrified. Virginia pointed over his shoulder. There was a thin crack in the glass of the front room window. Darkus cautiously knelt on the sofa, leaning over the back to look down into the street. Standing on the other side of the road, outside the tattoo parlour, was Robbie, the red-haired bully from school, surrounded by a gang of boys they called the clones. He opened the window. Hey, beetle boy, Robbie shouted. Tell your dad if he doesn't call off his killer bugs, his son's going to get swatted. Yeah! Each clone made a fist and punched it into their other hand. They're not my dad's beetles, Darkus shouted back. He's got nothing to do with it. Oh yeah, Robbie jeered. That's not what the papers say. They say your dad's a murderer. He drew a finger across his neck. They'll probably bring back the death penalty just for him. The papers are lying, Darkus shouted. None of it is true. Yeah, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Robbie sneered, a flash of metal from his railway track braces. But I've seen you and your gross beetles. We all have. The clones' heads bobbed about on the ends of their necks. And we told the police about how weird you lot are, talking to bugs. What the papers say is true. I know it and I ain't going to stand for it. Quick as a flash, Robbie drew back his hand and flung a stone that had been hidden in his fist. Darkus felt the flint strike his cheek a stinging blow. He covered it with his hand as he pulled his head back from the window. Oh, you're bleeding! Bertolt gently pulled Darkus's hand away so he could see the cut. We're gonna get you, Beetle Boy, and your dad! came a shout from outside. Ignore them! Virginia said, shutting the window as a barrage of stones hit the glass. She quickly closed the curtains. How can I ignore them? Darkus brushed Bertolt's fussing hands away. They're saying what everyone thinks. People believe what they read in the papers. Everyone thinks Dad is guilty. There was an uncomfortable silence as Virginia and Bertolt looked at one another. The growing wail of sirens made Bertolt run to the window. He peeped through the curtains. <gasps> it's the police, he gasped. There are two cars pulling up outside the health food shop. They're getting out. What shall we do? 
We can't let them in here. Darkus looked about him in panic. They mustn't see the beetles. They'll think it's evidence that Dad is guilty. They can't come in unless they have a search warrant, Virginia said. I've seen it on TV. Tell them your uncle is out and you're not allowed to open the door to strangers. OK, Darkus nodded. But I'm not going to lie about Dad. People need to know that he's trying to stop Lucretia Cutter. He's one of the good guys. No, Darkus. You can't say anything, Bertolt said. Your dad needs Lucretia Cutter to believe he's on her side. Otherwise... The buzzer sounded. Darkus looked into the hall, half expecting to see the door being smashed open. It's not fair, he whispered. I know, Virginia nodded, her dark eyes sincere. But we know the truth, she patted him gently on the back. I'm going to find Dad, Darkus clenched his fists. Stop Lucretia Cutter and force the newspapers to print an apology on the whole front page. On his shoulder, Baxter flicked his elytra open and closed, vibrating his soft wings in a thrum of agreement. We'll be right beside you, Bertolt said. Every step of the way, Virginia nodded.